it says, when a charge is placed on a metal sphere, it ends up in equilibrium distributed equally, uh, uniformly over the outer surface. Okay, let me just start by drawing some pictures. Um, this is kind of how I read the questions too. Um, so I have a, a metal sphere. And the question doesn't say it's a hollow sphere, but when it's a conductor, it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> it says that when you place uh, charges on it, that this charge in equilibrium ends up distributed uniformly over the outer surface. It's just telling you a fact. Uh, it's something that I hope you will, uh, by now you understand and can even drive why that that should be the case, especially for a metal sphere. It comes down to the fact that with the conductors, that electric field inside is equal to zero. And uh, charges on the conductor get redistributed to enforce that condition. And for a metal uh, sphere, the charge distribution that will enforce this condition is that they are uniformly distributed on the outer, uh, outer surface. Yeah. So anyway, so the question told us that, and it says use this information to determine the electric field of uh, five uh, microcoulomb charge. So this is my Q uh, on a five centimeter radius. So I have radius R, five centimeter radius, um, aluminum spherical ball at the following two points in space. So um, part A is uh, easy. It says a point four centimeter from the center. Uh, it, ties directly into what I was saying just now, that the charges on the metal sphere are distributed to make the electric field inside zero. So if you knew that, then you immediately know that the answer to this is zero. Uh, magnitude of electric field inside is zero neutron per column. Now, if you didn't know it, uh, then what, what you would do is you would do application of Gauss's law. So uh, you can do it this way. Let me um, copy and paste this. And I, I want a larger version of what's there. So, so you can, even if you didn't know that fact about conductor that I just brought in, you can, um, you can do a quick mini derivation with the familiarity of Gauss's law and the symmetry argument. This is, this is the quick derivation you can go through. You can consider a Gaussian surface that ex exploits the symmetry of the situation. And the symmetry of the situation is the spherical symmetry. So you want to know the electric field at a point here, which is um, you know, four centimeters. It's inside the, the radius of the sphere. Then you consider a Gaussian surface that's a spherically shaped so that it matches the symmetry of the setup that contains that point. So you are considering Gaussian surface of radius uh, four centimeters. Then, then you go through the application of Gauss's law and finding the electric field at this point. You have the Gauss's law, the net flux through that Gaussian surface is equal to Q and closed uh, times four pi k at the Coulomb constant. Um, now, in general, this alone doesn't tell you the electric field, but here specifically, you know the electric field because you know the um, symmetry of the setup and exploiting the symmetry of the setup, you can pull the electric field out of the integral. So from the symmetry, you know, whatever the electric field might be here, it kind of is the point in the radial direction, maybe points inward, maybe points outward. Either way, the symmetry of the setup tells you that the only electric field you can have is either outward, in, is in the radial direction. So that allows you to simplify this dot product, E dot DA, because here the area element is perpendicular to the surface, pointing outward. So, um, so this stop product it simply becomes um, EDA, S since uh, both of the po possible direction of the electric field and the area vector is in the same direction. 
or same or 180 degrees from each other. So that's how the dot product simplifies. And this is where you make the symmetry argument that based on the rotational symmetry that you observe here, as in you can rotate this to any other point and nothing in the setup has changed, you argue that this electric field must be constant over the Gaussian surface. Once you have made that argument, making that argument allows you to pull this expression out of the integral. If it's constant, it's not changing, then it can live inside the integral or outside. And once you've pulled it out of the integral, then you can say that, oh, this is just the area of the sphere. So you have electric field times the area of the sphere and all this is equal to the right hand side. And this is where you observe that this uh, Gaussian surface that you defined includes a zero charge. Therefore, electric field must be zero. That's the, um, that's, that's the simple symmetry argument that you make. And if you weren't somehow familiar with the fact I, were, I was bringing in as I was answering this in, you know, in a couple seconds, then, then this argument is what should go through to drive that on the spot. And you can do the exact same thing for this uh, point outside the sphere. And when you go through all this argument all over again for a Gaussian surface, this time, um, you know, the outside the sphere, let me just do this with a highlighter so that it looks different then all many of the arguments that you have seen me make will remain the same. The thing about the relative direction of the electric field and the area vector will be the same. The thing about the symmetry of the setup mean electric field is constant over the surface will be the same. So you can pull it out still, that hasn't changed. What changed is the charge enclosed. So instead of being zero, now that is equal to uh, now, now that is equal to the Q that's given in the question. So you have to plug that number in. So let me just uh, solve this for the electric field. When you do that, this is what you end up with. Electric field is equal to um, four pi's cancel. So I have Coulomb constant times Q divided by, uh, I guess I can still use R squared, minding that R is equal to 5.5 centimeters divided by R squared. This will appear to be the, exactly the same as the electric field due to a point charge at the center of the sphere. That's a general result I hope you have heard about and now that you know how to drive that from scratch on your own. So uh, you just have to plug in the numbers for that. So let me just write that here. A Coulomb constant times the amount of charge given divided by R squared. So plug in the numbers, make sure to convert to the metric prefixes. Uh, I won't actually plug in the numbers in the interest of time. 